Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. I am Chanel. So this week I'm still going through all of the Goodreads recommended books that I got because at the library I think I've only got one book that's coming in this week. So I'm going to go and try and find some of these other ones that I think will be available because they're not brand new. They're a bit older. I haven't decided what I'm going to start with yet. Um, I'll put a picture up here once I've had a look uh, and to see what I was able to borrow and what I feel like reading first. So that's going to be number one. So today I'm going on a date. Uh, we will see how it goes. It's another one from the online dating app. It's a, a year of being single so far. And, and at this point, you just you just hope to have at least a good conversation and then go on with your day. But it's going, it's going to be a short, sweet one because the gentleman I'm going on a date with a man today, he has a headache. So that's fine by me. I'm not feeling great. I'm having one of those ooh, troublesome tummy days and I would rather be home. <laughs> so I was like, yes, Sean sweet it is, sir. We'll see you for a quick chat. Hello, is there any sparks? Is there any connection? Yes, no, off I go. But I'll let you know when I return from the date and I'll let you know a little bit how it went. But like I said, I have a Melbourne Diaries vlog on my other channel that I talk about all these things and more in full if you want more vlog stuff head there whereas this is more about my books and my cats but i'll see you later okay i'm back from the date and i thought i'd just quickly say it was not a romantic connection for me so that's all good but i will touch base with you once i've read another book keep biting it with her gums Show you what blue did. <laughs> okay, so I don't mind my hair. I went out for a walk while it was wet and it was so windy, and it's <laughs> this is how it's dried. So I read A Woman Without Shame, so that was a book of poetry, and I really enjoyed this. I really did. So the author is Mexican American. And the poetry book is written in both Spanish and English. So I just had to use Google Translate for the Spanish bits. I would say it's about womanhood and aging and family and relationships and heritage. But also, she also touches on the politics and violence in both America and Mexico. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm going to read you one of my favorite poems in it. It's a bit more of the one of the light-hearted ones, but I enjoyed it. I don't know how to speak Spanish, so please excuse me for butchering the language. So it's called Canto for Women of a Certain Lanto, after Dylan Thomas. So it's based on the poem, um, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. I'd rather wear none than ugly underwear made for women of a certain age. Rage, rage, do not go into that good night wearing sensible white or beige, Women who have squash blossomed into soft flesh and grieve the frothy loss of the interior garments of youth. Rage, rage, do not go into that good night wearing sensible white or beige. Gone the black lace architecture of the past, the thong, bikinis, hipsters, g-strings, gone, gone. The underwire and lace push-up cups replaced with feed sacks and ace bandage straps, pachydermian, prosthetic, a cruel aesthetic. Rage, Rage, do not go into that good night wearing sensible white or beige. Excellent women who in wise vision flower, blaze, scintillate in your finest era. Refuse the misnomer intimate apparel, for what lies beyond extra large or 36C is the antithesis of intimacy. Garments sent to exile animas solas, to the Siberia of celibacy, to sleep with dogs or cats instead of lovers. O oh, La Perla, why hast thou forsaken us? Will no one take pity and design foundations? Nay, lingerie for women of exuberance? Something imaginative, like Frank Lloyd Wright's falling water. In my imagination, I create a holster to pack my twin firearms, my 3838s. A beautiful invention of oiled Italian leather, graced tobacco golden, whip-stitched, hand-tooled, with western roses and winged scrolls. Mother of pearl snaps, and nipples capped with silver aureoles. And you, my mother, gazing from your chaparita height, who has cursed and blessed me with your DNA like so many Mexican women with a pillar for a torso, like coat le cue, magas brujas chignonas, rage, rage, 
Do not go into that good night wearing sensible white or beige. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this collection of poetry, so I highly recommend. I am still reading, I've forgotten what the book's called, but it's this one. And then after that, I'm starting Whispers of the Deep, which is supposed to be Monster Smut. So <laughs> we'll see how I go. Hello guys, I have to keep this really short and sweet because I am going on a school excursion today. So I finished reading What Monstrous Gods and I gave it three stars. So in this book, there are heretics and then people who believe in the polytheistic religion and it seems to be based on Christianity. So the polytheists, I believe that those gods are almost like fallen angels. And then the heretics believe in one God that I believe is Jesus Christ, which was interesting. So there was an interesting element to it. However, so the romance, this girl is raised by a convent. She has one golden eye, which means she's God's touched and she's sent to break a curse. So there's sort of a sleeping beauty thing going on where one heretic uh, sorcerer, magician, went into the royal's castle and put everyone to sleep and created a magical briar around the perimeter to make it so that people would forget about the mini gods and worship the one only. So she's sent to break the curse and she does. And uh... <laughs> and the issue I have with this book is the love was a bit insta-lovey. It really was. And the girl is 17 and the plot is convoluted. The way it was written, it was just very confusing. It, it was very clunky. There was no smooth narrative flow. So it was very confusing. There were interesting elements, but I just don't feel like it packed much of a punch. It didn't come together in a really satisfying way. And it just, I don't know, it was okay, which is why I've given it, you know, three stars. It was fine. It just mm, didn't quite tickle my fancy. Of the Yarra River. Okay, so I'm back. I, I got interrupted by my ex-boyfriend who popped past to say hello. So where was I? I then read Whispers of the Deep. This is Monster Smart. I normally don't read Monster Smart, and for this one, I still had to reconfigure the merman uh, into a more humanoid version because I just can't, I can't. If they're not pretty much human, my brain just goes no. No, 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 no. So I did do that. I did take out like some of the gills and spines and things like that. This is a three and a half star book. It was so easy to read. I just read it from start to end in one go. So it is very entertaining. It's basically The Shape of Water with Bioshock, which is a game, and The Little Mermaid. So it's those three combined. You've got a world that is pretty much water world, as in the humans no longer inhabit the land and they've all built these underwater dome cities and the mermaids who are called undines in this world are their enemies because they believe that humans just destroy everything that they touch so they are there's definitely enemies to lovers in this one he's literally trying to destroy her world it gets flooded he then has a second thought and decides to save her instead and the scent of her is very alluring to him it sets all of his like fins a flutter <laughs> so he's like why why am i so turned on by this enemy of mine i'm acting like a teenage male uh so he kidnaps her and puts her up in a cave and then gives her this android that is able to translate their languages because their languages are very different i think the undines sort of sound like whale song but naturally they fall in love and um in this particular book our uh, merman has a uh, two fish sticks so <laughs> it's interesting <laughs> it's interesting uh there is there is sexy times in this so <laughs> i can't i just can't take it seriously you know i just he's a fish man so um yeah i'm not gonna talk about the the intimate details but like i said it was it was entertaining do i want to continue with the series no no, it, it was good for what it was. 
and now I will dip my toe back out of Monster Smut for a while because, yeah, it's pretty full on. It's pretty full on. Um, I think I prefer, like, you know, vampires and fae and things like that that have just a little bit different <laughs> to humans and so much, so much, you know, the, the fish slime is, is a bit much for me. The next book that I picked up was insane in the membrane. I had to sit there and stare at a wall for an hour afterwards just in shock and also just pouring over everything that I had just read and trying to make sense of it and process it. This is a four and a half star read. This book is sci-fi, but it is also horror. This book is horrific. It is terrifying. It chills you to your soul. And I was shocked and awed. Shock, awe. So basically the premise of this book, which is a novella, so it's short and sweet. A man dies, is sent to hell. Turns out that the true religion is Zoroastrianism. I don't, oh, I don't know. I have to read. I have to see the word to actually remember how it's pronounced. But I'll put the word here. So this is the true religion, and anybody who does not believe in it goes to hell. And hell is many types of things. The one that he ends up being sent to is one with books. And you're probably thinking, oh, this sounds kind of decent. And he's told once you find the book about your life, you're free to go to heaven. So you just have to find the book that has your life story in it. <laughs> However, this is the Library of Babel. Pretty much every book that could ever be written is here. And you're probably thinking, oh, how many could that be? Like this, like for instance, books that only contain the letter A, books that only contain the letter B, books that only contain the letter A and B, books that are written from the perspective of an ant about a rock and so on and so forth. So even with the book about your life, you'd have to find the book about your life from your perspective because you don't want the book about your life written from your dad's perspective or the book about your life written from the house you lived in's perspective. That's There's that many books, guys. There is that many books. And I don't want to tell you too much about how the way this hell is structured because I think it's just, it's mind blowing. It is fascinating. The way that they can construct a hell because it is a hell. It is a hell. Like, you might not think it at first. Like, oh, that sounds great, actually. Like, I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. It slowly suffocates you. Like, it's just one of those frog in boiling water. At first you think, okay, it's not too bad. It's bad. <laughs> it is that bad. I, I sometimes feel like maybe there is a dimension where any book someone's created, like those characters actually exist. I hope, I hope to all the gods that these characters do not exist in any reality besides just words on a page because, oh my lord, oh my lord, this book has a lot of themes in it, obviously religion being a big one, uh, hubris, humility, love, fear, violence, despair, hope, like you run the gamut, you run the gamut and it was, it was something. It was something and I was gripped and I was just like on this absolute roller coaster ride which was mostly, mostly a descent. <laughs> mostly one way and I was just very grateful that I was not living that I'm like this is this is fantastic I will stay here oh, man I never in my life have ever thought I did not want to read books and then I was like there and I was like oh yeah that would not be a hell that I'd want to be a part of surely there are better ones than that that's not as good as it sounded on paper but yes a short stay in hell fantastic four and a half stars just wow I haven't read anything like that, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, yeah, terrifying. So that those were all the books that I read this week. Until next time, stay wild, Star Child.